Good morning and welcome to Vision. I'm so glad you've all chosen to be here with us this morning. If you're joining us online, I'm so glad you're taking some time out of your morning and enjoying some time with us. We're going to start by just standing up together, if you're in the room, that is, or you could do it at home, I suppose, too. We're going to stand up and sing out some affirmations. How are you this morning? That was wonderful. Thank you so much, Celebration Singers. You guys rock. Don't they? Don't they rock? Come on. Yes. Yay. Good morning. I'm Reverend Patty Paris, Senior Minister here at Vision. Welcome. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Before we do anything else, let's pray in because we know that's what we do. We bookend everything that we do with prayer. So please join me. I know that God is all there is. I know there is one universal intelligence. There is one energy. And it creates. That's what it does. It creates form. It inhabits form. It abandons form. It is change. And it is changeless. I know that this one eternal, the beloved, is the truth of all souls everywhere. I know it is the thing that beats our hearts and breathes our breath and circulates our blood. I know it is that energy that has created the entire universe and continues to create. We are living in a dynamic universe, constantly changing, constantly evolving. And yet behind all of it, behind all of the change, stands the eternal one. So I give great thanks that we come together to remember that. We remember it for ourselves and for each other to know that all life is some part of the life of God. And so it is. So good morning. How's everybody? It's great energy, isn't it? It's like, ooh, it's like really buzzy here this morning. I don't, can you feel that? It's like, yay, I love it. Okay, get prayer for that. You know, I don't know what that is, but get prayer for it. Either more of it or less of it, I don't care. You know, we have practitioners here. And they pray with us and for us all the time. And it's those kinds of things like, oh, I love the way I'm feeling. I want more of this, right? Then you ask your practitioner, let's pray that. And they do. And that's the way it works. So practitioners, please identify yourselves. Raise your hands. Look around the room. Look around the room. Here are the licensed practitioners and ministers who are here to serve you in prayer. So don't leave here today without getting prayer support because that's what we do. That is our calling. And so... So it's actually a gift both ways. Going to a practitioner 
for prayer enables them to live the calling on their heart as well, which is to pray for us. So you see how that works? It's a win-win situation, so do that. Don't leave here today without getting prayer support. For our vision community online, welcome. I'm glad you're tuning in. There is a meet and greet room after the celebration today, and you can get one-on-one -on -one prayer online. They, we have breakout rooms in that meet and greet room, and you can get that one-on-one -on -one prayer as well. So don't go anywhere after the celebration ends, but right over to the meet and greet room. Let's see, what else can I tell you? We have, I know we have them. Where are they? We have welcome packets. I know you saw them um, in the lobby on the welcome table, and in the back, I know there's a table there as well that has them. They're wonderful little packets of information that tell you all about vision, who we are as a spiritual community, how long we've been here, what, uh, what we do here. And what we do here is we welcome people, and we, we do that. We transform lives through this practical spirituality. Ernest Holmes said that there is a power in the universe that is greater than we are, and we can use it. And I would add to that, and it can use us as well. It transforms our lives by transforming us. And, bonus, there's a welcome greeting on this welcome packet. So let's say it together. If you remember it, if not, it's up there, right? Let's say it together. Whoever you are and wherever you are, you are welcome here, you are safe, and you are loved. And that is the truth of vision. You are always, always welcomed into this spiritual community. I'm going to turn it over to you now, yes? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> We're going to have our celebration singers sing our centering song and prepare us for meditation. Ooh. Take it away. Good morning. <laughs> My name is Marianne Downs Tanaka, and I'm a licensed practitioner here at Vision. So, please take these quotations into your heart as we move into the silence and allow the tones of the bowl to bring you into and out of a five minute meditation. There is only one happiness in this life, to love and to be loved. That was George Sand. And from Ernest Holmes, that this spiritual universe must be one of pure intelligence, perfect life, dominated by love, by reason, and by the power to create seems an inevitable Conclusion.
that God is all there is and that we are one with God right here and right now. And so I just claim for all of us here, knowing that truth, knowing that we are one with life, that creativity that, that created the universe is creating within us right here and right now. And so I just claim for all of us that, this, that we know this truth, that we celebrate this truth, that we come together today at Vision to just know this consciously together to grow and to, to raise our own consciousness. I know that this, this time and this place and this service is blessed. I know that, that, we, are, um, that we are all uplifted as we, as we sit and hear the words of Reverend Patty and the wonderful music that we hear today. I know that it is all good. It is all powered by God. And so I give great thanks I give great thanks for everyone here for knowing the truth, for knowing that, that, that we are one with God and that, that it's time to just smile and say thank you. Thank you for all of this. I say thank you for this prayer, for these words, and for the truth. And I simply let it go and let it be, and so it is. What is? We have a very special guest today. There aren't many people who can, uh, who can master their skill so that they travel as a, uh, doing what they do best. And uh, as a singer, he was just in, uh, in Portland doing Aida, the opera Aida, and he's going to be featured in Ain't Misbehavin' up at the uh, California Center for the Arts in Escondido. And uh, I, I also, I'm going to tell the story because really, you know, we all sit and want to go to the gym, but we don't. So <clears throat> he, he told me before, before uh, earlier today that he was at a hotel in, in Indian Wells and he went to the gym. He was in the gym by himself at this, and then all of a sudden two big guys walk in looking official, and then uh, shortly thereafter, a presidential uh, person came in, it was working out, and uh, so as it ensued, he wound up singing for President Obama's second inauguration. So the moral of the story is, go to the gym. <laughs> so please welcome DeAndre Simmons. Thank you. 
these mornings You're gonna rise up singing Then you'll spread your wings And you'll take the sky Thank you so much. Oh my. Wow. It's still August. <laughs> we are in, uh, I can't even think. <laughs> God, that was so good. Thank you. Um, living everyday wonder is the theme for actually for the year. And, and August is living everyday wonder nature. And so today's talk is loving all life. So uh, what are we talking about here, right? What do we what do we even mean, loving all life? Let's let first. I need let's define the terms, okay? What do we mean by love? Because I mean we hear it, you know, like so much. Love, love, love. Oh, I love those shoes. Oh, I, did you see that movie? Oh, I love that movie. You know, I love my new haircut. I, we, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, you know, it, it, we love all kinds of things, and we just use the same word over and over and over again. You know, at least the Greeks, they had like a bunch of different words. They had eros, and you know, which is like romantic love, ooh la la love. They had um, uh, philos, uh, uh, brotherly love, and they had agape, you know, universal love. And they had a whole bunch of different words for it. We have love. So w let's d define our terms here. What are we talking about when we say loving all life? Um, I'm a tennis player, so for me, love means nothing. Ha <laughs> ha. Look, Dan's not here. <laughs> what if he were, right? Okay. Love means nothing. But here's what Ernest Holmes had to say. He said, love is the central flame of the universe, nay, the very fire itself. It is written that God is love and that we are its expressed likeness, the image of the eternal being. Love is self-givingness through creation, the impartation of the divine through the human. So it is, it is love that expresses through us is creativity. We must create, right? Singers have to sing, and musicians have to play, and mathematicians have to create equations, and we have to create. Cleaners clean and make things look beautiful better than they ever did before. And whatever we do, we are creating something new, and, that's, and that is the, the divine process, the divine process of love pointing the way and law making the way possible. We create, and, and that's what love does. It creates through us. And so I looked it up, I looked up love in the Bible, because why not? And, and it appears a lot. It appears a lot. So in the King James Version, what they used for the word love, love and whatever else they used that it was interpreted as love, was 442 times love shows up. Right? Which is, and it's really funny because it's not even in the top 10 of words that show up in the Bible with any frequency. I think God is the first one for like 4,200 times. But anyway, but love shows up at least 442 times in the King James Version. In the New International Version, it's 686. So they interpret things to be love a lot more. I don't know why. The English Standard Version, 684. The New American Standard, 479. So it is an important topic in the Bible, right? It's really important in, the, in their philosophy, which is different from other things that don't ever, ever show up in the Bible, like, or like just say the word abortion. Did it ever show up in the Bible anywhere? Anywhere? Anybody? 
once, once. And it was a Pharisee telling a man how to perform one on his wife. Look it up, numbers. Anyway, we're not going to go there. <laughs> so if we decide, right, if, if we decide it is better to love all life, because that's how we've been instructed, love all life. How do we do that? Where do we start? Where, where shall we begin? Do we begin with the smallest thing, the smallest little bit of life and work our way up, right? So that we can discover, maybe, where we exclude love from certain things, right? Because we all have lines. We all draw the line somewhere. I love this, but not that. Right? But there's always a line where we draw. Or do we start with the grandest thing? Blue whales, you know, or something. Do we start with the grandest thing and work our way down, all the way down to the unseen, to the cellular level, to discover where we draw the line? How do we love all life? How do we decide to love all life? How do we do it? Should we do it? Why should we do it? Well, Ernest Holmes tells us, he said, from selfish reasons alone, if for no other loftier reason, we cannot afford to find fault, to have, or even to hold in mind anything against any living soul. The God of love cannot hear the prayer of one who fails to love. So if you're holding anybody outside of your heart, if you're holding anybody outside of your unconditional love for all of, of God's creations, what Ernest Holmes is saying is like, don't bother, right? And they said the exact same thing in the Bible too, didn't they? If you're going bring to your, bring your gift to the altar, if you're holding something against someone, don't bother, right? They said, don't bother. Go home, fix whatever is wrong, forgive whatever's happened, and then come back, and then we'll talk about prayer right? But don't even bother. And that's what Ernest Holmes said. The God of love cannot hear the prayer of one who fails to love. When we are in judgment, we are, we are split focused. When we are in condemnation, we can't be loving at the same time. We're withholding, right? When we are, when we are putting someone outside of our circle of love, then it's almost like there's God and there's something else, right? Which, which actually violates what we know is true, that God is all there is. Well, if God is all there is, what's this over here, right? Oh, that's the person I don't love. Well, God is love, so how can that be, right? This is, again, going back to the Bible, the house divided against itself cannot stand. You can't have love and not love and decide, I'm going to manifest the life of my dreams. Oh, but this person over here, yeah, not them. Remember, they're bad. We can't do that, right? So we create this illusion within our own lives of God and something else. There's God and something else. And when we create that illusion, we become fractured, right? We're split. Our, our energy is not where it's supposed to be. We are vibrating at a different level, and that is not at the level of love. So we cannot attract into our experience love, if that's not what we're, we are, if that's not where we are at. We cannot attract into our experience what we're not sending out, or to say it positively. Let's say it in a positive way. We can only attract into our lives that which we send out, right? So if we're holding our hearts hard against somebody, that's the energy that we're resonating in. That's not love. It's something else. It's fear, or it's condemnation, or it's a judgment, but it's not love right? Remember, we live in a reflective universe. Spirit can only come send back to us what we send out. It is, it, you know, it, the universe doesn't happen to us, it responds to us. It responds to our, like Ernest Holmes said, our most predominant thinking. And it outpictures accordingly. In the Science of Mind textbook, he says, all, as all is mind, 
And as we attract to us what we first become, until we learn to love, we are not sending out love vibrations, and not until we send out those vibrations can we receive them in return. Really pretty simple. There you go. Right? What we become. What we become, we attract into our lives. So the more we become love, the more we settle our, our illusions of separation and our condemnation and our judgment about anything, right? Then the more we, we become our authentic selves, the more we allow God's love, the love of God, the authentic self that we are to flow through our lives into the conditions around us, changing them. And that's our charge, isn't it? But darn it. How do you love those creeps? <laughs> oh, God. Right? Doesn't it bug you sometimes? How do you love the bugs? That's even something else. How do I love the meanies? How do I love the cheaters? How do I love the, I don't know, people doing stuff I don't approve of? You know, Princess Patty sent out her edict. Why aren't you, you know, acting accordingly, Right? We all have that in our lives, though, don't we? We all have, no, why is he doing that now? He should be doing something else. You know, we, we, get, we get into those places where you should have known not to do that. So, so what do we do with all of that energy? What do we do with it, you know? That's our commandment, isn't it? Love God, love each other. Right? I mean, that's it. We, you know, we, when they ask Jesus, what's, you know, there's 10 of them out there. What's the, what's the top two? That's it. Love God, love each other. You know, and that's what we do in, in religious science. What is it? God's love. So love God, God's love, love each other, do fun stuff. I mean, really, that's what religious science is about. And do good works. Do good works. That's it. Those are our commandments. Love God, love each other. We are here to live in this unified wholeness. And when we live the unified wholeness, we attract wholeness. That's what we do. We resonate at that level. And when we have challenges with that, we have spiritual community to remind us, don't we? When you have an issue with somebody, isn't that when you call a practitioner? I do. That's when we call a practitioner. It's like, I am not seeing clearly. You know, I'm holding this person at fault. I'm making this person wrong for whatever, whatever, fill in the blank. How many do you have? <laughs> it's like a list, you know. I'm making this person wrong for something. So you call a practitioner, you call a minister, because that's our commandment. Love God with all our hearts, love each other. And when we have a challenge, that's what spiritual community is about. You know that old, that old um, God never gives you more than you can handle? That is such stuff. That is, that is, <laughs> wow, and I saved it. See how good I am? I love it. Whew, I was almost on a roll there. It, it, it is such a false belief. God gives you more than you can handle all the time. That's what spiritual community is for, right? That is what we are for. That is why we are here, because we hold each other up. We know the truth for each other. We, we multiply uh, happiness and we divide sadness. That's what spiritual community does. Ernest Holmes said this, he said, love is a complete unity with life. And we cannot enter this state unless we are in unity with all that lives. For all life is one. Oh yeah, we forget that part, don't we? As soon as we have an issue with somebody, we forget that. Oh yeah, God's one, duh. We're all one. All life is some part of the life of God. So when I have an issue with someone, who am I having the issue with? Really? with some part of myself. I'm trying to cleave off some part of myself and put it over there and make it not me. When I'm hating, I'm hating on myself, right? Because there's only one of us here. And when we react to hate with hate, right? So somebody's like, somebody's, you know, pouring hate on you and then you react back the same way because you, they deserved it. They did. We wind up feeling icky and bad, don't you? Don't you find up, wind up feeling icky and bad? Because it's happening within you. It's all happening within you. We've created this illusion of separation. We've put somebody outside of our circle, outside of our unconditional loving circle, outside of that idea that we have of ourselves, 
right? That I love everybody. Yeah, but then get on the freeway and see what happens, right? So we put somebody outside of our circle, and then, rah, 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 you know, and it's all their fault. We have created this illusion of separation. And then, and then when we react, anger for anger, hate for hate, oh, it feels so bad. Doesn't it feel bad? Afterward, don't you get that, hmm, I could have handled that better. I do, don't you? It's like that little, that little Jiminy Cricket moment <laughs> where it says, oh, I could have been loving. I could have been kinder. I could have been nicer. I could have been forgiving, you know? We feel that because that is not our natural state. We don't belong there. We don't belong in the illusion of separation. We don't belong there. And, we, and when we react hate for hate, we're usually reacting out of our woundedness, aren't we? Because somebody just zeroed in on our button and just pressed the hell out of it. And then we respond in like kind, right? We do. <sighs> and then we're like, okay. Then we respond out of our woundedness instead of out of love. And then we have to fall back and regroup. I need to remember that I can love as God loves. I need to remember that. And don't we forget it at those times? We just forget it. We just forget it. Somebody acts really, you know, unskilled. Somebody acts in all their unskilled behavior at us. And the first thing we do is, is react. Attack, defend, attack, defend. You know that dynamic, right? And we just, we just automatically go on the attack. We remember, we remember, I can love as God loves. I can love as God loves, and God sees all creatures as innocent, right? Ernest Holmes said, we are to look for God in each other and love this God, forgetting all else. But would this compel us to accept from people that which is not good? Of course not. It is not necessary to, for one to make a doormat of himself in order to prove God is love. For this would be suffering for righteousness' sake, which is always a mistake. So Ernest Holmes is there telling us, we are spiritual beings. We are not spiritual doormats. It's okay to stand in your power. It's okay not to be abused. It's okay not to... Not to, to be hurt, you know, out, out, in, the, out in, the, in the world. To prove how spiritual you are. Right? We are spiritual beings. We are not spiritual doormats. We can love all people unconditionally and not have lunch with every single one of them. <laughs> you know? You just don't have to do that. Right? I can love all life and know it as some outpicturing of the divine. I may not have to like it, you know, but I can love it as God loves it, as another divine creation, as another outpicturing of universal intelligence. Sometimes you can question the universal intelligence because we do that, you know. It's like, what, the, what was God thinking? But that aside, you know, we can love all life as some outpicturing of the divine. How interesting, how unique, how different, right? All life has some part to play. All of life has some part to play. And you know, we, this idea of loving all life because all life has a reason and a purpose and all life does stuff. And you know, when you think about it, talking about going from the grandest to the tiniest, right? We can love everything that there is, but we are still killers of life, aren't we? Right? We wake up in the morning, what's one of the first things that you do is you go into the bathroom and you brush your teeth. Guess what? There's over 6 billion bacteria in there, over 700 different species of bacteria, and we do not care. We wipe out millions of them every time we brush. Do you ever think about all the little bacteria you're killing? No. You are killing millions of them. You're wiping them out without a second thought. They are life too, you know? Where is your line? Where do, you, where do you draw the line? What's okay? What's not okay? You have to come to that yourself, but I'd rather brush my teeth, you know? And then, of course, what's the next thing you do is you wash your face and all those little skin mites die. 
<sighs> Sorry, but you know, something's got to give. <laughs> you take a shower, all those little bugs are getting killed. You take vegetables from your garden and you pull them out of the garden and you bring them in. What do you do? You scrub them, right? You scrub them off. Oh, and all those little microbes go down the tubes, right? They all go down the sink. We wash them so that they don't make us sick. But we need those microbes in the soil to break down the organic residue, right, in order to return nutrients back into the soil so we can grow more vegetables to eat. But we don't think about that, but we killed millions of them without a thought. So are they good or bad? Right? All those microbes, the ones that make you sick, the ones that give you stomach problems, the ones that, you know, ugh, give you food poisoning. Are they good or are they bad? Oh. Right? It depends on, on how, they're, how they're affecting us, really. Should we love them? Well, yeah, of course. They're God too, right? Oh, they're God too. If we go back to core concept one and say everything is God, well, that doesn't leave any except, right? Except the bacteria in my mouth because I'm just going to kill it all. <laughs> I mean, think about, think about the people who are allergic to bees. Right? They do not like bees. Bees could kill me. Bees are integral to our environment. If it weren't for bees, it's like, oh, I don't know, half the food that exists today wouldn't exist if it weren't for bees. <sighs> we need bees. Even if you don't like them, you love them as God loves them. Right? They're part of a unified wholeness, which we call the world, which we call our lives. Hate snakes? Anybody here hate snakes? Come on, you love snakes, right? Hate, 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 hate. Okay, so you're, you're, you're really lucky because last time I, I brought my snake in to, for people who were like, here, hold it, it's okay, you can get over it, you know? Lots of people are afraid of snakes, okay? If it weren't for snakes, we'd all be up to our butts and mice and rats. You know, I mean, think about what they do. They have a, they have a purpose to serve. They do good stuff in our neighborhoods. You can still love them from a distance, right? <laughs> you don't have to get up, clo up close and personal with them, but you can love them as God loves them. Here is that wonderful thing. This is that agape love. This is that, that, that love of all of nature, all of the world. I can love things from a distance. I can see it over there. I love that over there, right? Ernest Holmes said, form is entirely in the realm of effect. Form comes and goes, but it is not self-knowing. Form is within the formless. Form is not an illusion. Even when it is in the form of disease, it then simply represents a false conclusion, but it is as real as it needs to be. So all the forms in our lives they are of God, but they are still in effect. Remember the teaching symbol that we talk about all the time, the big circle and the V. Form is at the bottom. Form is a temporary outpicturing. It is just a temporary outpicturing, and it can be a false conclusion, right? What we know is the unity of wholeness. That is what this philosophy teaches. And what we know in the face of dis-ease or disorder or discord of any type is we know the spiritual prototype behind all life is perfect. Ernest Holmes said, perfect God, perfect man. That's, he used the male gender. Perfect being, right? We know this is true. The spiritual prototype behind anything is wholeness. It is wholeness regardless of what is being presented at the time. If what is being presented is a, is a condition that is less than wholeness, we know it is a false conclusion. And we continue to hold the wholeness, the unity of wholeness in our lives. Healing is the revelation of wholeness, isn't it? You know this, right? Practitioners, this is what the, they learn in, in these classes. Healing is simply the revelation of truth, of the wholeness that is there all along. Because disease is the illusion, the false, the false conclusion that something is wrong. And when we, when we start concentrating, and this is why practitioners won't talk about it, when we start concentrating on what's wrong, what are we doing? We're just growing what's wrong, right? We're putting our attention on it. So what we do is we know the spiritual wholeness of that person. That does not deny the condition they're going through. The condition, like he said, is as real as it's supposed to be. 
It has to be handled. It has to be dealt with. But as a spiritual guide, we deal with it as the wholeness behind that condition. The condition is temporary. The wholeness is eternal, and we know that. Healing is the revelation of the truth of wholeness that is there all along, very much like we know the sun is out <laughs> somewhere. We can't see it because it's covered up by the clouds. Same thing, the condition of the clouds. And we know the sun is there all along. The sun didn't go anywhere. Oh my God, where's the sun? Will it ever come back? Right? It's there all along. And we know health is there all along. We know wholeness is there all along. It is temporarily covered up by this false belief. So we love ourselves into revealing wholeness. You know, what is, I mean, like, what is disease anyway? It is a cell in our body gone rogue. What the heck is that? It is one of our own cells gone rogue, but we're still one and we're still whole. Regardless of the condition, we are still one and we are still whole. A bacterium, right? A bacterium in a colony will go, will go rogue. They get rid of it. Did you see that? Did you read that recent article about bacteria growth? I mean, in a petri dish, it was so funny. When one of them goes rogue, the other one's like, they turn their back on it. <laughs> it's so cute. Little single cell bacteria, and they're like, we'll have nothing to do with him. <laughs> He's gone rogue. It's lovely, right? <sighs> you know, but this is life. This is, this is life, right? A, a, a snake eats a mouse. Wholeness is still being revealed. A bee stings a person. A marriage breaks up. Someone makes their transition. We are still one. It, there is still wholeness being revealed. There is only one. There's only God. In all of its glory, in all of its power, in all of its presence, we are still one. Ernest Holmes said this. He said, love is a synonym for God. And God is love. The universal outpouring of the spirit through law wisdom, life, and action. God knows us in love. We know God only through love. When we love humanity, we are loving God in and through others. God is an eternal presence, an everlasting principle of reality. God and love are synonymous. Love is the cornerstone of the universe, the language which is universal, interpreted to and through every living soul and understood by all. Love will find solutions within itself to every problem, will answer every question. It is the lodestone of life, the center of reality, the heart of the universe. And it will ultimately win and vanquish every foe. We must then locate love and God within our own consciousness, here realizing the unity of all life, love, truth, and wisdom. Thank you. I'm giving you an earworm alert right now. On uh, Wednesday or Thursday, when this, this song plays in your head for the 20,000th time, uh, and it still puts a smile on your face, you're going to be very grateful to DeAndre for singing this. So. a bright golden haze on the meadow there's a bright golden haze on the meadow the corn is as high as an elephant's eye and it looks like it's climbing clear up to the sky oh what a beautiful morning Cattle. 
all are standing like statues. All the cattle are standing like statues. They don't turn their heads as they see me ride by. But a little brown maverick is winking her of the earth are like music. The wind is so busy, it don't miss a tree. And an old weeping willow is winking at me. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Instead of our alarm clock buzzing, we should have DeAndre's song <laughs> come on when we set the alarm. Wouldn't that be perfect? No buzzing, just that song singing as you wake up. Oh my God, that would be beautiful. Anyway, it is, it is time for conscious circulation. This is our opportunity to give back to, to prove the principle, basically, that, that we live in that law of giving and receiving. We live in a, in a circular uh, universe and that spirit gives out way more than we give it it's just we could never outgive God even if we tried try it sometime it's fun we are so grateful for the support we get we are so grateful to keep the keep the place going keep this ministry inside the doors and outside in the world and doing the work that we do this is um this, this is the kind of ministry you want more of, and that's what this is all about. So thank you for your generous tithes and contributions. You know, it's like the weird world the last two years has been strange with COVID, and, and you've all been right here um, supporting. So, well, maybe not right here in the room, because you couldn't be for a while, but thank you. Thank you. We are so grateful to be able to continue to do what we do because of your support. So if you are giving today, or if you have given today, or if you give online, just bring that into mind. Just bring that into your mind so that you know this is conscious circulation. You are part of a grand and glorious circulation of spirit. So going within, let us pray that. I know spirit is abundance. I know that it is limitless abundance, and spirit shows us every day. It shows us with blades of grass and leaves on trees and grains of sand. It shows us always the, the infinite abundance of spirit as it flows into and through form and creation all around us all the time. And so I know that we are part of that. Each and every person is an individualized thread in this tapestry that we call life. 
and that we are giving and receiving as well. We are the microcosm of the macrocosm of this law of cause and effect, giving and receiving. And we know that we stand in the river of God's abundance always. Open-handed, open-hearted, giving gratefully, receiving graciously, and always, always being in the flow of circulation. And so it is. So it is. So now is time for the Miracle Minute, and I know I have one, because they're here. <laughs> I have this Miracle Minute. You know I love to get these, right? So email me, revpatty at visioncsl.com, and then I will read yours next time. So this is a Miracle Minute. This is a demonstration of answered prayer from Brenda. She said she asked uh, for prayer for her trip to Virginia and had the last number on the flight on Southwest, on a full flight. And she said, on, on the first flight, the guy I'd been talking to in line, when he saw me looking for a seat, he offered to move into the middle to give me the aisle. Wow, wasn't that cool? <laughs> Did you ever have that happen? I love it. And she said the second flight was even less full, and even though she was the last one to get on, she had the whole row to herself. I love that. Put the little arms up, spread out. Anyway, she said, when I got there, the family dynamics were good as they could be between myself and my sister and my father. Didn't have to cuss at my sister once. <laughs> well, yay. <laughs> I love that. And, and then I got to North Carolina for a cribbage tournament and made the playoffs four out of six of those tournaments. So yay. Yay, Brenda. I'm so glad. <laughs> oh, wait. I have another one. But wait, there's more. I had two this week, and I just love it, love it, love it. This is... Uh, from Joan. I love this. I call this miracle my COVID cure. <laughs> I love it. I had a persistent medical issue that my doctor was stumped about. I tried a number of things, including acupuncture, and nothing helped. In July, I was exposed to COVID and had a very mild case. The miracle is that with COVID, the other symptoms disappeared and have never returned. And now I am healthy. My doctor was speechless. He had no idea why it happened. We know why it happened. <laughs> Good prayer. Good job, practitioners. <laughs> Thank you so much for sending in these miracle minutes and demonstrations of answered prayer. They're so inspirational to all of us. So keep praying, keep, keep watching, keep being aware of where these demonstrations occur. Sometimes they're little subtle things that you can just like not even think about them, think about them. Because the more we, we bring our attention to answered prayer, the more prayer is answered. And speaking of answered prayer, now it is time for the last word by Johnny Kirka. Here's Johnny. Thank you. 
So we are continuing our, um, our Congregational Sunday, which means we have food available right after our celebration. So join us for that. We'll have some tables set up, and we will enjoy a meal together. Also, the meet and greet is available for those of you online who want to join us for that. We have practitioners available for one-on-one -on -one prayer. Joel's here today, so he won't be joining you guys. So join us for that. There's links available on the website as well as on Facebook. So this Wednesday evening, we are having our Vision Variety Show right here in this space. Yes. So we expect all of you who are not a part of the show to be in the audience. So I'm counting all of you right now. There's like 60 of you. So you better be back here Wednesday evening. Tickets are available in the Resource Center or online. Join us for that. Some really cool to see our, our group up here and performing. There's some really talented people. I think Marcus is singing. You're singing, right, Marcus? Marcus is singing, so good stuff. Johnny Kirko is going to be up here singing, too. So, yes. So join us for that. It's going to be a really good time. So we have so, some information on classes to talk about. Mr. James Vandenberg, our education director, is going to tell us. Very, can I do it from here? I sure. guess I can. Yes. So first of all, the, our last class of the summer term starts this Thursday morning. It's not too late to join that class. Information is online, and it's also, if you're in the room, it is, um, there's a poster about it, and all the information's on the, in the hallway, in the, in the bulletin board in the hallway. But there's still room to join that. It's all online, 100%, but it's Thursday mornings from 11 to 1 in the afternoon. Next. Next. I'll okay. just tell you. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> Introducing something brand new from Centers for Spiritual Living, Advanced Consciousness Studies. This is a 27-week class. It goes from September all the way through into June. This is a deep dive. It used to be that if you wanted to continue on the path of studying and expanding your consciousness, you needed to just start practitioner training. That's how you went to the next level. Well, now practitioner training year one no longer exists. This class is required for those going on to become a practitioner, but it's also open to anyone who's taken a certain amount of classes and have been around this teaching for a while based on your consciousness. It's for that deep dive to learn how to apply and embody and embrace these science of mind principles. Reverend Patty and I will be having a question and answer time. If you're interested in this class, it'll be starting soon. But um, we will have, a, we have all the answers. <laughs> so if this is an interesting thing to you, I've taken all these classes, but I have no desire to become a practitioner, yes, you, you probably can join this class. Um, but it's a, it's a commitment on your part and on Reverend Patty's and ours, and we would love to help you on your path with that. There's several other classes, so that'll be today, right after, right after service. Yes. We'll have a Q&A, &A and we'll answer your questions to the best of our ability. All right, now you can move on. There's several things coming up in the fall. We have another brand new class from Centers for Spiritual Living. It is a foundation level class called Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life. It's only five weeks. It'll be in person. Reverend Patty will be teaching that here. It focuses on money, relationships, and physical health. Five weeks, how to use the science of mind to fix those things in your life. <laughs> Essential Earnest is also coming up in, in, um, in September, and don't let the name fool you. It's not just a tribute to Ernest Holmes, it's a deep dive into the core concepts of the science of mind. So if you're ready for that next step, that's a good one for you. And then Rev, um, I started to say Reverend, Marianne Downs Tanaka, our lovely practitioner this morning, she is be, will be facilitating a book study from the book Radical Acceptance, Yay. Embracing Your Life with the Heart of a Buddha. Oh, beautiful! it's a beautiful book. There's more information about all these classes on the website and in the hallway, or you can just ask. Thank you, James. Good stuff. Our education department is rocking right now, you guys. Support that. I mean, these are some really good classes. And one thing you do is when you go into a class, I, you see the little comment that says, come for Sunday and you'll change your week. But you come go over to a class, you'll change your life. And also the, the really important thing is you get to know all of us. So as you get into a class, you get to know all of us as members or a part of Vision. So be a part of that. It's really good, good stuff. 
want to mention to you that we have a, um, a concert with Carl Anthony coming up. It's called Get Ready for Love. Get Ready for Love. And it's going to be on September 10th. It's on a Saturday evening. Really fantastic concert. Carl Anthony's amazing. He'll be light show and he's got a guitar, blah, blah, blah. Tickets are available in the Resource Center or online. Going to be good stuff. So the adopt -a bill We've been talking about the adopt -a bill for a little while. These are Bill. Bill 1, Bill 2, we got a lot of bills available in the Resource Center. The way it's working, if you're not familiar with it, is that we have our board out there which has uh, all of the bills we have over the year. And you can help support Vision by buying or helping pay for one of the bills, or many of the bills, or all of the bills. You just rip them all off if you want. We'll take that. Rent's only 90 grand for the year, so that'd be nice. But when you get that, you get one of the cuddly bills. So. When you go and rip off the, the, the sticker in the front or online, you can go online and, and, and get that. You get a bill to take with you. But what we're doing is it's our fundraiser for this year, I mean, for this quarter. We appreciate everybody who's done that. Thank you very much. You can see all the things, the stickers that have already been taken off, and we hope to see more in this, for this first quarter. Thank you very much for that. Next week, Reverend Patty Paris will be back. Her talk title is Make Yourself at Home. Are we wearing, like, pajamas that day? We can. Okay. <laughs> And Joe Rathburn in the house band will be with us, so good stuff. How about DeAndre Simmons today? <laughs> Holy Toledo, does he have a voice. Love having him here, good stuff. And I want to thank Rhea Carey for filling in today for us over here in Celebration Center. Love you guys. And happy birthday this week for uh, Monica Ryan. Thanks, guys. Oh, too late. I've got the microphone now. Sorry, honey. <laughs> What's up? Okay. Next week. You need a microphone. You do. Practitioner. Okay. Next week, for hospitality, we're trying something really different. I'm challenging everybody in this room and everybody online to be here next week to bring something for hospitality that you've never made before. It's a creativity challenge. Go to a recipe book, go online, I don't care. Something that you've never done before, bring it in next week. Neat. Creativity I've already picked challenge. that line. So, okay, huh? thank you. You're welcome. Good deal, I love it. Something I've never made before. Hmm. Okay, well, it's going to be interesting. Let's stand up, everybody. We're going to say our affirmations. <laughs> We're going to just, yeah, claim the truth of that. I love it. Okay, let's say them together. Empower, you know, if these are in, in passion, in purpose. <sighs> you ready? You with me? Okay. Just like nature, I am aligned with the energy of growth. I live from the truth of my being. I am whole, strong, and well. Okay, I'm going to, yeah, okay, we're going to do two and three. Let's just lump them all together because I love those two. You ready? You with me? Okay. I live from the truth of my being. I am whole, strong, and well. Oh, I love it. What power. Okay, going within one last time here this morning and knowing that as we settle into the cave of the heart, we know that we are right there, right at the center of, of, of our being, knowing that seed of perfection nestled within, that is spirit. That is the spiritual prototype of us, that spiritual mental equivalent that all is well, that there is only one life, it is God's. It is expressing through each and every one of us, and it is expressing in all of its wholeness, in its health, in its vitality, in its strength, in its love and in its joy, that we are the outpicturing of the divine life of God and we are well. I give great thanks for all of this good. I know it is the truth of us. I know it is the eternal truth of us. And I simply let it be. And so it is. And so it is. Amen.
and the